Yeah. God damn it, you fucking piece of shit cat. I'm gonna kill you dead. I'm gonna kill that's him. Our, that's our violence against animals segment. <laughs> he's got fucking 12 toes and he's the worst. This segment brought to you by the Humane Society of Eugene. Look at this. Look at That's this. That's right. The Humane Society of Eugene, where you can come down and get one of these handsome cats. We've got Oliver here. He's a he's a gray and white cat that looks like he's a piece of shit. But we'll take good care of him here. If you don't come pick him up, we're going to put him down. How do you not see them toes? That's six toes. See his toes from space. That motherfucker got six toes. <laughs> I call him Santos, and I hate him. <laughs> His name is Thanos, but we call him Santos, and I hate him. I, I, I the other day I was working and I had to stop what I was doing. I'm, gonna, I'm fucking doing it now. Qui Gon Chin. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the best nicknames ever. And I, I'm so, I'm trying to move a bag of coffee, and it just <laughs> runs through my head, quite on chin. And I fucking had to stop what I was doing God. to laugh. Because I'm about to ruin. Oh. <laughs> Dude, okay. Hold on. I have to kick all of these used to. I look funny. Out. But yo, I'm making money. Let's See, go. so yo, world, I hope you're ready Let's for me. Now gather round. I'm the new fool in town, and my sound's laid down by the underground. I'll eat up all the licorice you got on your shelf. So just let me introduce myself. My name is Humpty. Pronounce with the umpty. Yo, ladies, oh, how I like to funk thee. And all the rappers in the top ten, please allow me to bump thee. I'm stepping tall, y'all, and just like Humpty Dumpty, I'm gonna fall when the stereos pump me. I like the rhyme, I like my beats funky, I'm spunky, I like my oatmeal lumpy, I'm sick with this, straight gangsta mac, but sometimes I get ridiculous, I eat up all your crackers and your licorice, hey yo fat girl, come here, are you ticklish, yeah I called you fat, look at me, I'm skinny, it's never stopped me from getting busy, I'm a freak, I like the girls with the boom, I once got busy in a Burger King bathroom, I'm crazy, allow me to amaze me, they say I'm ugly but it just don't phase me, I'm still getting in all the girls pants and I even got my own dance, the humpty dance, dance is your chance, do the hump, I messed up the line. I'll drink up all the Hennessy you got on your shelf. Yeah, I was like, I, I, we'll, we'll go with it. We'll go with it. Going. He's rolling. We're, going. We're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> all right, man. Are you ready for a good ass show? I think I'm, I'm. I think I'm ready. Damn. Alex. Alex, Alex says no. <laughs> no, he's he not. I am now. <laughs> <laughs> the face right <laughs> cool <laughs> all right here we are we're back again it's another edition it's another episode of my show and i need an easy friend i do with an ear to lend i do think you fit this shoe i do but you have a clue it's that guy over there it's me, mm-hmm. Alex. Uh, just like just like the other guys, I'm back. And but... better than ever. <laughs> <laughs> and introduced by that guy right over there, or there. I don't know where he is on your screen, but on my screen he's there. But he might be there. It's there. me. There. It's one take, Jake. Back in the saddle again. Welcome to the show where I drink three beers in an hour and call it a podcast. <laughs> but we are joined. By the third man in the booth, it would not be the show that we know and love without this man. The mouth of the Deep South, the agent of chaos. It's Robin. Goddamn right it is. What's up? Woo! Uh, you know, not a Woo! lot. Hey! <laughs> so we've got we've got a lot to get to. We got a lot we to got talk some about. Things. We got we some things. We weren't here last week. That's true. I was fucked up in <laughs> in Vegas. <laughs> I, at one point, like I got back and my boss says to me, hey, sorry, we didn't interview for the supervisor position. I'm like, if you had interviewed me at any point last week, it would have n- definitely not gotten me the supervisor position. So thank you. <laughs> you probably could have said, you know what? You may have interviewed me and I just don't remember it, too. I don't know. I don't know. All <laughs> I'm saying we didn't a- interview the supervisor job. So when do I start? Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, 
yeah, it was uh, it was quite the quite the yeah, time. Yeah. Tell us about that. There, you want to hear? You want yeah. me to? You want me to lay them out like all at once, or do you want me to like like intersperse Ooh, them? Uh, to our, our podcast? Let's. Uh, I, I like chronological order, so so well, let's see, let's hear the, it from the start, the, and then the problem go. with that is going to be I don't remember exactly what happened on what day. Okay, well, don't tell us. Just whatever yeah. order you tell I them mean, is chronological. Like, yeah. Okay, so I actually do think this happened the first night I got there. I don't remember. There was a quarter <laughs> involved. Um, oh. Yeah, no, not of that. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, we we got all dressed up and ready ready to ball out because we were, we thought we were gonna go eat at uh, at Prime. Mm-hmm. Uh, emphasis on thought. Um, yeah. So we get there, or we like like we're looking at the menu. Jen thinks she's found like a diamond in the rough. Like mm-hmm. this is where it's gonna be. This is the place. Like they have prime rib for a reasonable amount of money like let's like let's go here like we've got a bellagio fountain view like it's on the terrace like this is going to be baller i'm like hell yes i've got a tuxedo jacket that looks like it's fresh i've got (laughs) i bought i bought a bow tie
Maybe we close Skype for a second. Oh, there we nope. go. Starting recording. Or maybe I. Starting recording. Well, Robin is recording. Start right. the recording. Robin, uh, Alex, uh, what if, what? because I'm seeing Alex, what if Robin left and came back? I can try it. Hold on. I try it. And stop I again. Seeing yes. you, and he goes, not going to cost you anything. He was like, wait, what? He goes, yeah, 100%. I'll drop you off at the front door, hand you a bottle of Jack Daniels. You won't even have to pay a cover to get in. Yeah. And all nine of them hopped in this limo, cruised for like 20 minutes or whatever it was, hopped out. Limo guy ran up to the bouncer with him, was like, they're good. The guy was like, welcome in, gentlemen. Just checked ID to make sure yeah. that they were of age. And boom, right because on in. That limo driver got paid $50 oh, yeah. a head. Yeah, for bringing them over there. Yep. Yeah. And so yeah, he he bought them booze, took them out. I was like, oh, Vegas. Yeah. Customer yeah. service number one. <laughs> <laughs> Customer service number Folks, one. I want to go to the um, ducks. The ducks, and I just, ducks. I still haven't been to a single one. Like I, I looked at the one at the strip, or on Fremont Street, and that's it. Like I didn't even go in. I was like. I, put, I think I might be stuck my head in and was like, yep, that counts, and then left. <laughs> I want to go to the one that uh, the old the old wrestler, the Godfather, is a bouncer at. Yes. That's the one uh, I want to go to. Is it Cheetah 2? Uh, it's either Cheetah 2 or, like, Diamonds. Uh, yeah. Or I think maybe, I think Disco Inferno works at Diamonds. That sounds right. Uh, yeah, those, either one, like, let's go and hang out with Godfather. I was just saying... <laughs> Jake's hey, I love it like, when you did the. I love it when you're Papa Shango. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's gonna. Jake's gonna go to a strip club and ignore all the strippers. Just gonna tell me wrestling, wrestling <laughs> stories. I just want to hear your wrestling stories. He's like, hey, I'm well, trying to do my job. Like, get like, out of here. Uh, I, like, I'll, like, I'll help you bounce. It's all good. Bro, watch but, Dark Side. Like, like <laughs> got shit to do. <laughs> like, like all these ladies, you want to? Yeah, man. Tell me more about the hoe train. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. So once we're at Fremont, we we did the zip line, which was really really cool. Um, okay. Did, did the the big one, so flying like Superman, of uh, the full the full length of Fremont Street, which was it was pretty cool. Like that is definitely cool. They had there was a the the there was one dude who's racing two guys, and the one guy was able to set up two uh, harnesses faster than the the two guys could set up two harnesses. Ah. And, yeah, it was it was pretty impressive to, and that's to watch the story him. of how two people died <laughs> over Fremont Street. Yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny that you said that because um, when I did it, I screamed, "We're gonna die!" As soon as it started. <laughs> that's funny. Well, like the, the way the way they do it, it's like they open up the the gate, and so there's no real like you're not a, there's nothing to be afraid of, like really, when yeah. you look, especially because you've already been hanging for a solid 30 seconds right and so the sensation of hanging is is already there then you're just moving yep like the first thing as soon as i went out i looked down i'm like i want to see what 11 stories down looks like <laughs> so i've never done a zip line ever anywhere that wasn't like the discovery zone if you're old enough to remember the discovery yeah. zone uh, like easy at discovery, discovery zone it, where i could be even that, and beyond my own like the discovery <laughs> zone zip line was like you grab the little handle it goes like 10 feet and then you fell on a foam pad so it's like the, it, you hit the yeah, thing you as hit hard as you could Boom. and then and then they don't hit the wall yeah exactly don't put a wall there that's <laughs> that was that's the only zip line i've ever done so i've never done any like like adult legit zip line like is it just, is it cool just because you're seeing the world from a different perspective? Like, is there like an actual rush of it's, like, <gasps> like, are you going faster than you expected to go? It's a sensation go? of flying. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Pretty much. I, it, yeah. I'll say this. I don't want to do like an afternoon of zip lining. Like, I don't want to go on a zip line course and go, from, yeah, yeah. and go from like <laughs> one to another, like, and do that all fucking day. Like, but if I'm going to go on a zip line and I'm going down Fremont Street and like, because, you know, as you, you, you go, you know, down as you're going, mm -hmm. so you increase speed the further you go. So, I mean, it's, I mean, that's the physics of it, but like, it's fun. It's very okay. cool. Like, it, it's one of the things that you should do, but probably not multiple like i probably wouldn't do the fremont zip line again unless somebody really wanted to do it like gotcha okay. it's like oh i want to go yeah. but someone needs to come do it like i don't yeah, want to do it alone like okay i'll do it but yeah. like gotcha okay 
The, did you see the one um, down by the big uh, observation thing? I forget what it's called. The, the wheel? Link, the thing, yeah, the at the link. Yeah. Did you see that one? I didn't see one? that. No, I didn't go over so, there at all. So it's, yeah, it's hard to, to find that sort of thing because you have to be going towards that big giant wheel, you know, the big observation wheel that's in mm -hmm. Vegas. If you don't walk down that alley, you don't see that shit. So a lot of people don't even know it's there. Like I... I had seen it before, and then it took me until uh, last year the, when I went to Vegas to finally see it. And I was like, oh, this is where this is. No, <laughs> I heard about it. Here. Never figured it out. I'd walked past it a hundred times. There's there's like so much stuff that we didn't get to do that I really wanted to do. Um, like there's a couple shows that I actually wanted to see. Like one of them was the one uh, Absinthe that's just like running in the tent. Mm. This is yeah. basically it's like Cirque de Soleil but burlesque. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I want to see some some uh, talented titties. Mm -hmm. talented yeah, there's a titties. few like that. Talented titties is the name of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. I like that. Uh, I like talented titties. Who doesn't? Hey, <laughs> they've all they've all got talents. Um, so yeah, I discovered <laughs> that the the daiquiris, uh, if you're gonna get them, get the 190 because they just pour rocket fuel on top yeah. of it for you, and mm -hmm. that gets you drunk, especially mm -hmm. when it's 110 degrees and you're sweating all the moisture out of your body and you're replacing it with with rubbing alcohol. Boost. Boost. Take much. Did yeah. you go into Casino Royale? I don't know. I don't. No, think you so. would know if you did. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't... Did you find White Castle? So if you didn't find White Castle, you I probably... did find White Castle. I saw so, White Castle. Okay. So yeah, it's the casino next. It, basically, it's in that casino. Oh, okay. So you, yeah, but that's where. Um, that's not an outdoor White Castle. There must be multiple White Castles. No, that's it. Uh, the, it's. It looks like it's outside, but it's not. Like part you could probably can you access or it were from you outside talking about or... like the one or is there one down by um planet hollywood now i think there's one over by uh treasure island actually okay yeah that's the same one. Oh, okay yeah because yeah. treasure island's across the the strip across the the street yeah i didn't uh, go into casino Royale. i went into new york new york that was cool i i realized i like the old yeah, strip cool quite one. a bit too like i like the aesthetics of like the paris and new york new york when it be yeah. like the aesthetics of Planet Hollywood were just Chris Angel's face. Yeah, Planet <laughs> Hollywood really is pretty boring. <laughs> as far as He's a mind goes. freak. I'll say, yeah. like, he had a really cool picture with, like, a whole bunch of fire, but, like, everything else, fuck him. Yeah. It's like, I, I had Gwen Stefani over here. I had Chris Angel over here. I guess I'm going to look at Gwen Stefani. <laughs> Gwen's yeah. definitely. Hey. Uh -huh. But, uh, so we're leaving. We're, we're, it's, it's our day to get out of Vegas. And uh, so there, like we we'd heard on the news that there's a monsoon coming, and we're like, oh, what does that mean? They're like, oh, well, it's gonna rain, but uh, the strip should only see some some minor cloud cover and a drop in temperature about five degrees. So you know, business as usual on the strip. So we're walking with our big ass luggage, and it starts to rain, <laughs> and we're Seattle people, so we don't give a shit. And we keep walking in the rain. And it keeps raining and it gets harder and harder and harder. And we realize that all these people who ran for cover five minutes ago were actually the smart ones. <laughs> <laughs> but now we've gone too far. <laughs> yeah. Now we <laughs> have to walk. Now we have to walk in the rain. Oh, and like, the, I don't know what it was. And, and honestly, it was a warm rain. So I was just like, I was just damp until I got home. Right. But like, I, I didn't really care. But like I, I look over as I'm walking through this monsoon carrying my luggage, and I look over and there's like a dude standing there with a drink, just looks at me, just nods, just like, yeah, man. <laughs> it's like, don't carry an umbrella, walk in the rain, be a man. <laughs> right? <laughs> Those videos are so fucking good. The be a man guy. Be a man. Be a man. Oh my god. Well, he's always so sweaty. But yeah, so and then yeah. then we uh, spent some time at McCarran, and uh, our flight got delayed, and then we got picked up by that guy over there. This and guy. this was like the smoothest pickup in history. Dude. Like, and I'm sitting there, I was stressing Jeez. because baggage claim always feels like it takes forever, even when it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Even when it's as punctual as possible, you're like, why is this baggage taking so long? <laughs> so 
I text Alex, we just touched down. He's like, cool, I'm on my way. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, how many times is he going to have to circle before we pop out? And so our luggage comes out, we get it, we we go out to the sidewalk, like, and I'm like, all right, I don't see him, I don't see him. I'm going to call him. Now, keep in mind, my phone is always on silent. 100%. 100% of the time, my phone is on silent. And so I'm going to call him. I reach in my pocket, pull out my phone, and it says, incoming call, Alex Maxwell. <laughs> huh. So I answer, like, where are you? He's like, I'm at, I'm right over here. And he he pulled up as pretty much as we walked out. It was the most ideal, like, Threw the luggage scoop. in, and there was like a, there was like a, lady who was like directing traffic and as soon as like we closed our doors she like looked over at me and like gave me that look like are you trying to leave and i was like i was like yeah i'm leaving and she just goes let's go and just right on out and and we were gone it was hit that hit that seattle efficiency like are you ready to go it's time for you to go let's go let's go let's go i was like done (laughs) donezo it was great so good and some tax there was like she stopped somebody and on the lane one further over was like a cab but they were like definitely still scouting to pick up somebody right, right. so they weren't in a hurry to get out so they were like oh yeah come across you're good all the way i got all the way up left lane done we were out of there it was like it was like i wasn't even at the airport awesome. you, you also you did the other thing that the to get by in traffic here you just need to be decisive mm-hmm if you're decisive, everyone will get out of your way. And like I, to the point, like I remember I was leaving the Seahawks game one time and I had like a car width and a few matchbooks space to get through. And it was like a guy's Tesla and someone else's car. And I was like, that guy's not going to pull out because he's more scared of my car than I am of his car. Yes. It's, <laughs> And so I just like started creeping out and I, and like this guy started to pull. So I had a little more space and I just, and I was just whoop, 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 out of town, <laughs> nobody's business. But I just, it's like, I'm in a Mazda, you're in a Tesla. You're more afraid of me than I am of you. Let's go. Let's go. I, w- I want to see what Teslas do leaving like Austin after a game. I would be interested to see, like if you put it on autopilot and just chilled. How yeah. would it yeah. handle it? It's just well, like I, I imagine they're built to handle like regular no. traffic, right? Yeah, but that's not, not regular yet. traffic. That's dickhead traffic. They're technically not allowed. They they You're haven't not supposed to. <laughs> well, no, like it just doesn't work. Apparently, they like Tesla had to put like a stop, I guess, to regular ass traffic auto <laughs> driving. Huh. Like they they did a beta thing and it didn't yeah. it like there was no crashes but there was enough close calls that they were like this isn't safe to put up so they like oh. turned it off and so now the car senses whether you're on coming going onto or coming off like an on ramp and that's when it will engage and it'll take you on the freeway and then when it hits the off ramp it gives you all the stuff saying like hey you're in charge dickhead and then it's time for you to drive <laughs> <it>. so <laughs> like. Literally on September 15th, if you were like, auto drive me away from Otsen, the car would go, no. no. But <laughs> maybe a year from now when they fixed it, then then it would right. be hilarious to watch it. Like, no, uh, uh, no. Well, I had seen that uh, there was a um, th- there was an issue with um, first responders, their lights. For some reason, <laughs> when they were on the side of the road, they were fucking with Teslas. That's and causing them to be crashed into yeah so right it's just it's weird they'll get it figured out yeah I mean, it's, yeah. it's going to be like Westworld in season three when everyone just hops into clear vehicles that just Marshall drive around the Lynch city wears weird ass shirts but you know here's here's <laughs> when like i realized that Westworld had lost the plot <laughs> When when uh, I turned it on, yeah, no, I I fuck I loved that show for like two and a third seasons, and then I was just like, what the fuck? It had, I was gonna say, I feel like it had two solid seasons planned out, and then it was kind of like, where do we go after this? Yeah, that's exactly how it feels. So I'm wondering if they have an idea. <laughs> so Marshawn Lynch is wearing this shirt that has all these different like emotions on it, and whatever he's feeling lights up. 
as to like when he's angry it goes boom angry so like when he's fighting all of a sudden it's like revengeful or you know whatever and so it like the first couple times he was he was on it was a light up shirt the last few times he was on it was just a shirt with the word like darker like lit up like in different text so they just like oh. had the yeah if you go back and look like the shirt yeah like it goes to just a basically a printed T-shirt, and I'm like, they don't fucking care anymore. <laughs> like, uh, like nobody's gonna notice. I noticed. I noticed. Nobody's gonna notice. Nobody's gonna know. How would they know? How would they know? <laughs> How would they know? I I want to uh, see your manager. I want to see your parents. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen the angry IKEA guy on TikTok? Yeah, that's what I was. I oh, was is that, yeah, okay. yeah. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, so that's I, I mean that's all the the stuff about about that Vegas was... that didn't involve uh, talking <laughs> too closely. It's all the stories that didn't involve the excitement of not having children around. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. That, yep. That's it. Yeah. So we've yeah. got uh, Robin wanted to talk about well we we actually just kind of started talking about it earlier today and it was Robin's yeah. top ten wrestlers. And I realized that a lot of my top five was going to be in his top ten. So I'm just going to give my bottom five wrestlers uh, uh, to go in conjunction with Robin's bottom five. So uh, to the councilman from or- uh, Southern Oregon, I cede the floor. All right. So uh, here we go with our top 12 wrestlers of all time. Because I, I realized I wrote 10. And then I was like, but there's two more. And they're tied. But I'm going to do them after I do my bottom five. Coming in at the worst wrestler in the history of wrestling. Ooh. Bill Goldberg. Bill Goldberg. <laughs> the Number one with a bullet. We're doing, we're doing Number one first. with a bullet. Yes. Number two. Like he, he, I, I'll say this. Bill Goldberg, <laughs> like, Jen, like, I hate Goldberg so much. Jen knows I hate Goldberg. Like, That's I said, funny. all right, I need, to come, I need to come up with my, my top five most hated wrestlers. She's like, okay, Goldberg. I was like. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, that is correct. Yeah, that is correct. Uh, number four. Uh, well, wait. Would he be number one? So number two, the other way. ICP. Ooh, okay. Insane yeah. Clown Posse were wrestlers, and they yeah. were terrible. For my yeah. Juggalos and juggalettes. Yeah. Woo-hoo! Oh. No, he doesn't wrestle. Never mind. Number three, the Nasty Boys. They were pretty bad. Oh my god, they were so bad. The nasty boys bad, were bad. How they were fat dudes. Yep. Uh, had who one wore thing clothes there. that looked like they'd never been washed. Like okay. they they it, had yeah. They, they thought they, had they no were gimmick. the Legion of Doom. Yeah. But they were just fat. Like, they would just stand and punch. Yeah. And then put you through a table and be like, "We're the nasty boys." Yeah. yeah. Y'all suck. Y'all suck. Okay. Num- number f- number four, number women three. wrestlers. All of them. All of them. <laughs> Except China. China could wrestle. Yeah. Okay. Number five. Double J, Jeff Jarrett. Also J-E-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-F-
Like when I was a kid, he was on TV and he had the cartoon yeah. and he wasn't completely terrible. Which is why he's better than Goldberg, but that's right. it. Which is why he's like better he, than Goldberg. That's why. Well, that's why he's not on my list. Is because okay, okay, okay. Because uh, See, to I didn't me, have as the a cartoon. Kid, yeah, he was. He was like he was okay. I might even have him on a lunchbox. Like I said, this is where this is. Mm-hmm. These are the types of conversations right. where I realize right. that Robin's that, a little bit older was, than me. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Continue. <laughs> All right. Uh, number three, Double J. Uh, I just remember his run in <laughs> WCW so in the late in 2000. And he he had the yellow hunting glasses, and he was calling everybody mm. slap nuts, and he kept hitting people with guitars. It was so bad. Remember when lame. he had those shirts that were made of like it had a bottom, and then a neck. Yeah. And then the rest was like if you'd taken that shirt and he looked just like sliced a, it. He looked like a shitty Chippendales dancer. Out. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. this is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I just found pictures. Is, is that yep. the shirt? Yes, that's exactly yep. the shirt. That's the shirt. This I is described not... it pretty good, I think. <laughs> yeah, you did. I, I remember there was a, a time when he, when the the whack pack from uh, Howard Stern was on ni- mm-hmm. uh, on Nitro, and mm-hmm. like the like I think it was the angry midget dwarf or whatever they called him, Bob the crackhead dwarf. Oh yeah. But... <laughs> ah. Yep, with the glasses there and everything. Is. Wow. So like he he says something to him. Er, and and he turns around and hits like this this guy who has no reason to get hit with a guitar just absolutely gets a balsa wood guitar exploded over his head (laughs) right so yeah jeff jarrett number three number four from the new school a guy i hate more than anyone in current wrestling joey janela you Uh, don't know who he is he's a fat lump of turd that's all you need to know um and Uh, number and number five Disco Inferno. <laughs> I have tried and tried oh. to justify Disco Inferno to myself for years, and I just can't do it. I was like, he he took a bad gimmick and made it work, but when I go back and I look at like the Disco Duck, yeah, and when he tried to become like the Hip Hop Inferno, and just latched onto Conan and is still doing it today, yeah, uh, like. Yeah, that, uh, that Disco Inferno gets you the number. You are number five worst wrestler of all time. I thought of him, and I just I was like, you know what, Jeff Jarrett's way worse anyway. Um, I, like I also that, considered. Like, I, I've Bob got a lot Holly, of WCW on mine. Right, Bob Sparky Plug, Sparky Plug, that, Bob. That's Holly. what they call me, Bar Sparky Plug, <laughs> STP. And uh, oh shit, Plug. now I forgot the other one. God damn it, there was another one, but yeah, those guys, man. Great wrestlers. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> anyway, and now we go to the other side of that list. So, so now, just, up, like, and, just number one, let's get it out. Sto- Stone Cold Stone Steve Cold. Austin. What? What? We all know. Yeah. Um, kind of came up with a top five, and then I was like, I think I can do a top ten, because my, my top five is pretty easy in my mind. Uh, Stone Cold, and these aren't always in order, but Stone Cold is number one, and then RVD... Uh, Gold Dust, The Undertaker, and The Rock. Those are the the top five filled out. Okay. And then uh, going on, I didn't necessarily have an order for the next five, but they are grouped like first five, second five. Uh, Mick Foley, Mm -hmm. Ric Flair. Woo! Now, the next three I put as groups, but they're still one. NWO. That's cheating. It's not. That's super it's not, cheating. It's not because I only count the original ones. Scott Hall, Hulk Hogan in that, and I really don't even don't even Hollywood count Hulk Hogan. I don't even count that Hulk Hogan. I would count Scott Hall and Nash, Hall and Nash. I should maybe I should. So put the, the outsiders. outsiders. Okay. I should have put I'll, the outsiders. I'll let you have the outsiders. You say the NWO. That starts involving six, the Million Dollar yeah, Man. Yeah, and, nah, yeah. I don't count all those. Yeah, it's just, I I just thought that Robin was trying to shoehorn Hulk Hogan on this list twice. Like I didn't have Hulk Hogan on my yeah, list. Yeah, he did. I had Hulk Hogan. Not yet. And then DX, which I still only count the originals of them: Triple H, Shawn Michaels, and That's so the cheating. New Age Outlaws. That's no, it's so not. cheating. Because because I don't like Triple H as a singles wrestler. I don't okay. sh- like Shawn Michaels as a singles wrestler. All right. I don't like the New Age Outlaws as singles wrestlers. What I about as a tag team them... outside of DX? 
Only when he's announcing for the X. Only when oh, Road Dog is doing boys and girls, children of all ages, D generation X and D generation X is proud to present the tag generation. team champions of the world. Oh. Yeah, that thing. The Road Dog, Billy Gunn. All right. Or, and then yeah. number ten or or the, the last of that top five or bottom five, however you want to look at it. The Road Warriors Legion of Doom. I don't okay. like them as singles. And they shouldn't can, be. See, they never, they never should have been. Like, what, just because right. Road Warrior Hawk had an alcohol problem. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Tell him, uh, Hawk. And then, and then my tied for eleven Sabu and Sandman from EC F and W. EC Dub, EC Dub, EC Dub. You see, okay. Sandman, Sandman was a mood. He wasn't so much a wrestler. He like came out and like yeah. changed, like. The the show would be like I imagine the show's happening. The show's happening. Hey Sandman, why don't you? Why don't you? I'm uh, suddenly Paul Heyman. Right. Why don't you go out there and do that thing you do? Drink a beer and hit yourself in the face. They'll love it. And ten minutes later, the place is erupting. Like the the rafters are shaking and the gussets are bursting from the walls. And holy God. <laughs> I mean, nobody other than Stone Cold has made me drink more beer. Go Ducks. Than Let's go Ducks. And, and Alex, when you get around to watching One Night Stand 2005, you'll see Sandman drunk off his ass, like trying to get Stone Cold to give him a beer. And you'll hear Stone Cold break kayfabe. He's like, <laughs> oh, here's your beer. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Stone Cold. Okay. So good. Yeah, you have your hauling ass to number five? one. I'm sorry. Did you have your top five? Yeah. Oh, I have my or top ten. five, but it, I mean, it really uh, yours pretty much gets it. Uh, yeah. Let me. Well, no, because you had uh, Rowdy. Oh yeah, I had Piper in mind, and I didn't. Not that I didn't. I mean, I like Piper. I... Right. No problems with him at all. Uh, just when you think you know the answers, he changed the questions. <laughs> And see, and that when when I started, when you mentioned Piper, I started thinking because Alex had mentioned Mick Foley and his ability to cut a promo, and I was like, Piper could fuck a, fucking cut a promo. Yeah. So so next week we'll make a list of top ten guys to cut promos. I like it. So my in no order, my top five: Austin, Rock, Hogan, Flair, and Piper. Okay. That's, that's a good list. It's, yeah. it's it's a it's a hard list to find a problem with. It's a Hall of Fame list. Yeah. yeah. It's, <laughs> like, WWE legends, not well, superstars. Yeah. And w, legends. There's, there's some WCW mixed in there, with uh yeah. with Flair mostly. But I mean I could I mean honestly if I wanted to go into see here's do I want to talk about <laughs> my favorite wrestler? Do I want to talk about like overall? Because well, we want see, to talk that's about... what I did. I put my favorite wrestlers. I didn't put like the best wrestler. I didn't put like who cuts the best pro. Like I put, these like, are my who... favorites. I put who I rooted for the hardest. Because Gold Dust isn't making a lot of top ten lists. That's true, wrestlers. but and like for me, Arn Anderson isn't making a, a ton of top tens. Yeah, but I love Arn Anderson. Yeah. Like, thank you for the spine buster, double A. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, pretty much the entire horseman. <laughs> like, that's some good shit. Even you JJ count, Dillon was good. You count um, Lex Luger as one of the horsemen when you think horsemen? When I think I do, because I do. And... I think of Steve Mongo McMichael as more of a horseman than Lex Ooh. Luger. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, I'm going to react like Robin. Oh. Ugh. Sheesh. 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 That's what I'm saying. Like, Lex Luger was always his own thing. He was always on his own. He never really struck me as a horseman. So do you remember this summer when I sent you a picture of the WCW figures that I had? Like, Yeah. That was a four horseman pack. No kidding. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So, and Lex Luger was one of them. And that that's maybe that's why it's always stuck in my mind. Uh, yeah. So on your list, you put Foley. Yeah. When you say Mick Foley, do you mean Mick Foley or do you mean the amalgamation of everything? He I mean, did? I mean, Mick Foley, if he wants okay. to come out as fucking dude love, he comes out as dude love. If he wants to come out and wrestle as Mick Foley. 
Ooh. I'm okay with that. If he wants to be mankind, I have no problems with any of the characters. Right. He does. That's what I mean. So it's like, yeah. it's like it it is Foley, Cactus Jack, Dude Love, yeah, Mankind, yeah. all of them. He because him doing it. Like I put Gold Dust, and I didn't put Dustin Reynolds. Right. Is he you know, they call him the natural? Like there's a there's a difference. Or like NWO yeah. and the DX ones that I put or outsiders. Like I'm not gonna put Razor Ramon. Yeah, screw you, Razor Ramon. Right. You suck. Hey, not that hey, I didn't love hey, the bad guy. Chico, don't you say it. don't you ever say anything bad <laughs> about the bad guy. Hey, don't you know what? The bad facts dot info sticker has <laughs> Eraser. Eraser or Ramon saying, Hey yo. Chico. <laughs> but he did cut some good promos. He yeah, he was pretty good. Yeah. Now now he's now he's sober, so it's not fun anymore. <laughs> he like the story of that whole thing. Like, yeah. 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 Well, well they would they would save some lives. They would take the those dudes would would take some would take somas before the match and then when the somas would kick is when they'd go home. Yeah. Like it was a it was a race against their fucking sleeping pills to get their match in. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Man. And then they go get drunk. <laughs> yeah, the uh the the flight from hell. Oh, I can't wait for gonna that. be good. That's gonna be good. Poor Jr. He's so mad that he has to talk about it again. <laughs> uh, I don't want to talk about this. This is the last time. Uh, it's good old Jim Ross. Get on my website. Buy some barbecue sauce. Buy some buy some seasoning. <laughs> but I'm not gonna talk about the 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 gosh dang flat from hell. Okay, I'm not gonna talk about it anymore. I feel bad that Jr. sounds like Dana Altman when you say him do his voice. <laughs> yeah, it's oh. like a faster Dana Altman. That's <laughs> yeah. all it is. Is you sped up the tempo. It's the they're same. From the same. They're from the same part of the country. It, they yeah. are. They are. The exact same thing. It's just you say it quicker. If I'm like, are we talking wrestling or basketball? Listen to the speed of Jake's voice. Like that's. <laughs> also, if I'm Jr., I go her. Her. But that's that's it. You could do um, Dana Altman talking about wrestling, or you could do Jr. talking about basketball. It wouldn't matter. Gosh, Dang, you know, we, we just got Hulk Hogan and, and put him <laughs> in the ring. Uh, it would be quite possibly one of the best matches uh, you could get. Uh, you get a guy, double R, I, I, Razor, as uh, some of y'all like to call him. Gets closer uh, to the mic, too. Gets, gets a little closer to the mic, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, What's your captain speaking? This is your captain. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. I've got the, the ASMR possibilities. I can just whisper into your beautiful ears. You love me. That was oh, weird. Don't. Yeah, that, that was too much. I, I <laughs> he, he ECW'd it. <laughs> uh, ECW, ECW, WWE, ECW. WWE, ECW, right there. <sighs> That's how. Like, I have to differentiate because ECW was its own thing, and WWE came in and fucking ruined it. The first show they brought out a zombie. Just... I will say it was super, super funny. Uh, when when they said the quotes, they were like, "Well, yeah, now they're now they're doing drug testing over at ECW." And they're like, "Yeah, I'm sure they test any drug you set down in front of them." <laughs> <laughs> Joey Styles, Joey Styles is underrated. Quite possibly uh, one of the best play-by-play guys in the business. He and, was. Yeah, he did it all himself. He didn't have a an analyst with him or anything. Right. Like he, I really wished he would have gotten a push too, because you could tell just because he was only on. Well, he he had a he fucking blew up on air. Did you ever hear about this? Uh, probably. <laughs> so yeah, like so he was he was doing the thing, and he just in the middle of the show just gets up and grabs a microphone. He's like, "I'm not gonna do this anymore. You got all these guys. You want me to you want me to call them sports entertainers? They're wrestlers." Like, yeah. and then he actually he went to an old Jim Cornette line. He's like, "You've got you've got a bunch of guys who are wearing wrestling gear and wrestling boots and a wrestling ring on a wrestling mat in a wrestling show, and you want me to not call them wrestlers?" <laughs> He's not wrong. So yeah, Joey Styles lost it, and he's like, "I'm not doing this. Like, I'm not gonna have Vince McMahon yelling in my ear. I've done this on my own for years. I don't need help." Like, 
So wait, okay. <laughs> let's 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 bring. I'm going to bring in one hypothetical here because we're going full wrestling this episode apparently, uh, yeah. which I'm not in Vegas at all. In Vegas. Yeah, but more wrestling than Vegas at this point. Um, oh. You told your Vegas stories very quickly, and we're deep diving into wrestling now, and I'm That's excited true. about it. I'm <laughs> excited about it. Okay, we we <laughs> determined pre-show, actually pre-pre-show, that Nick Gage doesn't count because he's not a wrestler. Right. Yeah. Right. In the hypothetical that you do consider him a wrestler, is he better or worse than Goldberg? He's still behind Goldberg. Overall, he- Im- overall impact and how much – how. For the amount of time yeah, Goldberg was, has annoyed me. I still me. hate Gilbert, Gilbert, Gilbert. 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 Yeah. <laughs> I, I like, Gilbert. Goldberg has <laughs> pissed me off for 20 years. I will say the the limited the limited knowledge that I bring to the table as as the as the uh, the Padawan in this situation <laughs> for sure. Like I don't think that deathmatch wrestling like counts as wrestling because the whole point of it is just to bleed enough and not die so you can make it to your next match. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the point Nick, of wrestling is to make it look like it hurts and not hurt. Right. <laughs> but not Nick, bleed and not die. Like right. Nick Gage seems to, for lack of a better term, sell deathmatch wrestling more than either of you have said Goldberg has ever sold any wrestling. Like well, that's because he's actually he, dying. Yeah, yeah he like, only sells it because he has no choice. But what I'm that, saying is like Goldberg like, had a choice and he chose not right, to. Right. But if somebody <laughs> hits but if somebody hits Goldberg with a car, like he's Which probably they did. Not gonna bounce right back up. Right. <laughs> like, you know what I mean though? Like if if you get hit, if somebody stabs Goldberg, he's gonna he bleed. Can't, he can't not bleed. If he bleeds, we can kill it. Exactly. Kill it. Since somebody do should that. have killed Goldberg. Let's do that. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> kill Goldberg. <laughs> kill Goldberg. Kill Goldberg. Uh, kill Goldberg. Oh, no. Oh, sorry. Right, no. Uh, we we <laughs> could talk about football real quick. Uh, we I coached could talk uh, about. coached my first riddle game. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, did that I even tell like you guys? You you sent us a coach, picture. Coached my first game against the the school I started coaching at, which was Days Creek, and uh, I I felt bad because we we. We shut him out and scored 46 points. <laughs> like Oops. 46 easy points. Uh, running clock most of the second half. Oops. Kind of easy. And their coach was pissed. And I was, I wasn't like, I wasn't excited or anything when we scored our touchdowns. I was very much like, I can tell my team's better. We're going to score. That right. sort of thing. And mm-hmm. uh, so I'm like, hey, extra point. Like, pretty calm about it and their coach was like and like sorry sorry guy (laughs) sorry that you have to kick an extra point after a touchdown i didn't i didn't know uh i didn't know i couldn't do that sorry (laughs) i I didn't know i was supposed to not score i did yeah you don't want you don't want me to score (laughs) stop me right Mm -hmm. and then this week guess where i'm playing uh glendale yeah yeah like you're not you're not gonna pull up on them are you no if i could if i could put a hundred up i would but we have a we have a (laughs) i know i'm gonna try uh we do have a 45 point rule um what's the 45 point rule so once you get to 45 it's a forfeit well we got 46 because we we'd scored 45 and then the extra point was 46 we just did the extra point um anyway um the this week i'm installing some some formations that will cause them to waste timeouts and i'm going to save them till the second half so <laughs> i'm already planning on trolling them <laughs> that's so good right oh, i can't wait and the kids i told them about it today and then we lined up in it and they're like is this legal i'm like yeah it's legal it's called a swinging gate Figure it out. <laughs> figure it out. That's what I said. I said figure it out. <laughs> just gonna line up the. Are you? You're just gonna line up at the swing gate and just chuck the ball to the kid. I taught him. I taught him how to run it, and then I. I, I also set up a double gate, is what we're calling it. So, six guys wide, uh, or three on each side in eight man, quarterback behind the center, and I said, hey, quarterback, your job is to count. If we have more guys at one of these spots that's where we go snap the ball to you and if it's the right throw it to the right if it's the left throw it to the left if there's only two guys in the middle you run because you're gonna outrun them he's like okay i'm like easy peasy let's go 
<laughs> and then you have you have the you got to do the play where the guy gets the ball and he's like coach it's the wrong ball and he walks over the sideline and then everybody Doing stops it. and then he I'll turns and in. runs yep putting that in um we <laughs> so <laughs> the last play of the first half against days creek um we kind of did that we lined up in our i formation and i took my half back i called the timeout with with like four seconds left and uh i was like hey here's what we're gonna do uh halfback you're gonna line up over here on the right side off of the line and we're just go route and he's like uh where and i was like just follow me and and the ref was like all right coach is out and i jog off i'm like come on and he comes over there and and so they think he's running out of bounds with me and i'm like right there and then and he stops and then you step ref blows the whistle yep gone (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> they were pissed oh uh, it was awesome <laughs> so we'll do that again next week too nice yeah well you know these people they could have been anywhere in the world but they're here with us we appreciate that make sure you're checking us out on badfacts.info as well as on youtube that's where you can see our beautiful faces and see me pull the jersey swap it was a, a thing of beauty But for this episode, this edition of my show with Alex and Jake, good night, universe. Go Ducks! Go Ducks! The Goists.